Do you really need a rolling release in 2023? Well, I'm here to tell you today that chances are if you want a good functional Linux desktop, you don't actually need a rolling release anymore. Uh, there was a time where I would have recommended if you were just a standard desktop user, you could go ahead and use a good quality, solid rolling release. My opinion on that has kind of changed over the last couple of years and there's a few key reasons why. So what I wanna do in today's video is three things. First of all, break down the merits of the rolling release as it stands in 2023. Also give some good Good examples of good rolling releases out there and maybe a brief history we probably don't have time for that but anyway the second thing I want to do is then give reasons why a stable LTS release is better off for most people and then number three try and give a few recommendations of middle grounds between them hopefully without compromising too many of the values explained in point one and point two so strap in we'll see where this goes So welcome back. If you're new, definitely go and hit the subscribe button and uh, turn your notifications on and welcome to the channel. This is where we talk about uh, showcasing alternatives in the open source and tech world. And if you have been around in the world of Linux for some time, then you'll know that there are two different fundamental models you can use to build a Linux distribution. You can either have one that is a release based distribution. So every time there is a new version of a package or a new version of a desktop or something like that, you you pile up all those changes and then you make sure it all works in one stable release and then you release that to the public and you would call it Fedora 37. And on the other hand, you have a rolling release, which never really has a definite release schedule. It just kind of takes incremental snapshots of an ever ongoing, ever updating, ever evolving operating system. Now, the greatest examples of these historically have been Gentoo is the oldest one out there, but also Arch Linux has since become the flagship and kind of the poster boy of the rolling release Linux distribution. And then downstream of Arch, you have more curated versions of rolling releases like Endeavor OS, which adds a little bit more uh, user accessibility, things like a good installer and a few extra GUI tools. And then downstream from that, you have Manjaro, which has different levels of stability that you can opt into. Overall, Manjaro is still technically a rolling release. They give you up-to-date packages, they give you the latest and greatest stuff, but you can opt in whether you wanna be stable or whether you wanna be part of the testing branches to have the absolute bleeding edge stuff. You also have the venerable OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which I would argue is probably one of the best, possibly most underrated rolling releases out there. The quality assurance testing that the OpenSUSE team do on that distribution is uh, phenomenal and not many people know about it. So here's the thing though. I am no longer impressed by rolling releases and I no longer need them to be able to do what I do on the Linux desktop, I wanna explain why. But first, if you're like me and you like learning about stuff and constantly uh, updating the knowledge that you have on things that interest you, then today's sponsor might be of interest to you. So today's video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a fantastic interactive online learning platform that you can use to sharpen your skills and expand your expertise in any STEM related field. They have bucket loads of fantastic hands-on courses that are college level that can start you off with something as simple as like computer science fundamentals, which I've been digging into because it's a gap in my education that I'm trying to patch and yes, I'm still working on it. And they can scale all the way up to learning Python and understanding how algorithms work and neural networks and on and on it goes. The thing that stands out to me about Brilliant is the fact that each course is very simple and it's very easy and accessible. Like you can jump on, do a quick half an hour and know that the principles that you've just picked up, you've been able to practice in a very simple, actionable way and you come out with a better understanding and better ability to solve problems in whatever industry that you're involved in. So the good news is that you can start your learning journey for free at the link in the description box below, or you can go to brilliant.org slash infinitely galactic. 
You might want to hurry with that too, because the first 200 people that click on that link below and create a free account will also have access to 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited access to all the courses, no ads, no nothing. It's fantastic. So go check them out, play around, and special thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's episode. Okay, so second part. This is where I'm going to try and convince you that you no longer need a rolling release in 2023. When I polled a bunch of you on Twitter and on YouTube, most of you responded with uh, to the question of what, what do you use your Linux desktop for primarily? And there was a good mix of, of uses there. Uh, notably, gaming and uh, content creation were actually a lot smaller than I thought. Um, considering the strides that gaming has made. However, most of you use the Linux desktop for development and coding primarily. That's no real surprise to me, but it definitely wasn't the case uh, 10 years ago. It was much more of a hobbyist tinkering OS and uh, and definitely since the rise of cloud computing, develop and, uh, development and coding has definitely made a huge increase. So here's the thing. When you have tools that allow you to run the absolute latest programs and in development environments and other things in a very sandboxed uh, setup, application frameworks like uh, like AppImage and Snap Packages and Flatpak create an environment where no longer do you actually need the latest and greatest packages sitting on your system to run the latest software. You can have a very sterilized, stable, locked down base of a distribution and build sandboxed environments on top of that to do what you need to do. And I feel like for me anyway, this has dropped the demand that I used to feel to jump on a rolling release significantly. Not only that, some of the fundamental issues with rolling releases in terms of the constant moving target of the Linux kernel, graphics stack, and other fundamental parts of the system can and still do, according to the comments section, provide system breakages. Uh, and that just kind of depends on the luck of the draw, apparently. Some people will go years on an Arch system without experiencing any issues whatsoever, whereas others will have regular breakages on Arch, Manjaro, whatever it is, uh, seemingly every six months or so. And so it requires a very robust backup uh, scheme, which you probably should have anyway, but it's still worth mentioning. When you are relying on a Linux desktop to be your primary workstation and time is money, the amount of time that you have to go and troubleshoot issues that crop up from core packages being updated is can be significant. Whereas when you have full and total lockdown control over your stable release based or even long term support release distribution, and you have sandboxed environments on top of that, it is very easy to jettison, update, or downgrade the sandbox environment that you're working with to suit the project that you're working on. Now, for me, I'm a bit of a outside of the box kind of user in that I've used Linux for a really long time, but I'm not into development or coding, which is why I'm trying to learn some. But for me, the tools that I use in content creation, things like my video editor and uh, Caden Live and GIMP and others, those features get added to those applications because they are installed through Flatpak. I can get the latest version of OBS running on a distribution that came out four and a half years ago. And that approach is game changing. So here's my conclusion. If you really, really, really like to have the latest goodies or you have the absolute latest hardware and you need access to the latest goodies, then rolling release is still gonna suit you. But part three, what can you do to kind of meet somewhere in the middle? Well, this is where I'm gonna recommend that uh, you kind of learn some more stuff about Linux, honestly, because if you have a great stable release long-term support release of Ubuntu, or you have Linux Mint or Zorin OS or something like that, that only gets majorly updated every few years. Chances are you have a system that works really well for you. But let's say, for example, that you have a brand new piece of hardware, like a new Nvidia card, or you have a, uh, I don't know, some new peripheral that just doesn't have out of the box support on that kernel. Well, that's where custom third-party repositories for things like an updated Linux kernel can come in. Have to urge caution here though, because obviously you're compromising some level of stability to that long-term support release as you're now taking core components and updating them yourself. 
Now, there are also ways that you can kind of further lock down a rolling release model. It's kind of beyond the scope of this video really, but there are ways where you can uh, where you can convince a rolling release distribution and you can set it up so that it only updates packages uh, on certain stable snapshots every few months rather than whenever updates become available. But it can help to bridge the gap between these two. Honestly though, the thing that surprises me the most is that ever since Zorin OS 16.1 came out, I have had that sitting on bare metal hardware and I've been looking for a reason to get rid of it, but because so many of my games are installed there and are working just beautifully, because so many of the apps that I rely on and, uh, and other tools that I use are sitting on there and they've all been updated to the absolute latest versions through the wonder of Flatpak, I no longer feel the urge to go out and find the latest shiny stuff. Also, it helps that the innovation and features have slowed down significantly from the major desktop environments. GNOME, KDE, XFCE, they're all very iterative updates at best. Many people would have to look with a magnifying glass in order to see the changes that are being made. So do you really need a rolling release in 2023? Well, for desktop use, I argue not. But if you don't agree with me, you'll let me know in the comments as you probably already have. Always happy to hear more points and if you raise some really good ones, I might make a follow-up video to this one addressing some of those points in a constructive way. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.